Hi, I'm Roxy. If you're new to digital art, one of your first questions is going to be how to mix paint, as one of my patrons recently asked me. Or put another way, how to blend and make smooth gradients in your digital painting. So first I'll show you some blending techniques that you can use in any professional digital painting program. And then I'm going to show you some extra methods specific to Corel Painter. The first thing for beginners is to understand the color wheel, also known as the color picker, which looks a bit different depending on what program you're using. I'm in Corel Painter at the moment, and so we've got this rainbow ring. This is fairly standard across all uh, painting programs. Photoshop and uh, Medibang have a rainbow bar instead. Now, if you're a traditional painter, you can think of this ring or bar as all the tubes of paint, all the colors. So you'll swivel around this ring to select the tube of paint that you want, the hue. For example, it's on red at the moment. I can swivel it around to a cyan, a little bit of turquoise, green. So this is how you select your paint. Now, we've also got this shape in the middle. In Corel Painter and Critter, it's a triangle, uh, but in Clip Studio Paint, Paint All Sci and Photoshop and Medibang, it's a square. This is Paint All Sci. And then in Paintstorm Studio, you can actually easily flip between them. Regardless of shape, in one corner, we've got the most saturated that a color can be. So we've got this grass green and if we've selected this corner, we're not going to get any more intense than that. It's like as if you squeezed it right out of the paint tube. But you can drag it towards the white corner and you can see it becomes a lighter value and less saturated. Similarly, if we drag it towards the black corner, it becomes a darker value and also less saturated. Remember, this is the most saturated it can be. You can also drag it towards the gray and uh, the value kind of stays same-ish, but it becomes less saturated. So using the, uh, the ring, you can get any color and using the shape, you can get any value or saturation of that color. Now, let's say you've got two colors down. You've got red and blue and you want to blend them together seamlessly from red to blue. If you're a traditional painter, you know that red and blue pigment mixed together makes purple. So you're expecting a gradient from, uh, well actually I'm doing this back to front. So from blue to purplish blue to purple to uh, purplish red and then to red. Now on the rainbow ring, you could manually select purple. Pop that down in the middle and then uh, think about something in between this purple and uh, the blue. So maybe something like that and uh, kind of just get closer and closer and you could create a gradient like that but it's painstaking and completely unnecessary to do it that way. A much faster way would be to let opacity do most of the work for you. In traditional watercolor painting, the pigment is watered down, so you know that you can put down a wash of red, let it dry, and then put down a wash of blue on top and you'll end up with purple because the paint is semi-transparent. Now, in digital, we can control the opacity too. What's more, in any professional digital painting program, we can link the pressure we apply with our stylus on the drawing tablet to how opaque the paint needs to be. So uh, if we've got this blue, if we softly glide along, you can see it's really quite transparent. And the more pressure we apply, the more opaque it becomes. Now, you can't do this with a mouse, obviously, because a mouse doesn't have pressure sensitivity. There is only left click and no left click. So if you're trying to use opacity with a mouse, you need to manually control the opacity. Here's our opacity slider over here. But honestly, just go and get a graphics tablet.
Even the cheap Chinese brands are perfectly fine. So proceeding as if you have a graphics tablet, <laughs> uh, if we grab this red and start gently brushing it over the blue, I haven't gone, I haven't pressed hard, so I haven't got gone full opacity. Now you can see um, if I hold down Alt, which activates, uh, where is it on this hot bar? I don't ever use this thing. Yeah, the dropper. The eyedropper, it's like, um, it's like you grabbed your brush and you picked up a, a bit of paint off your palette. This is what the eyedropper does. It loads a paint color onto your brush. You can see that over here we've changed to more of a pink spectrum. And uh, even the position in the corner here has changed because I, I alt-clicked this over here. If I alt-click over there, it changes it to that. So now if I take the blue and lightly start brushing it over the red, I can alt click there and you see we've got uh, kind of in between these colors. Let me just fill this in. Could even, uh, if I wanted a little bit more of a, a dramatic gradient, let's just put the purple in there. Then we alt click softly and alt click soft, alt click soft, alt click soft, alt click soft, very softly just to not go full opacity but you just keep alt clicking and you can see you can get like this uh, fairly decent blend pretty quickly. Now what I actually do is I set this button on my stylus to alt plus mouse left button. So all I have to do is I hold down that button and as I move around, you can see how this here is changing. I'm not even clicking anything. I'm just holding down this button and wherever I go, it's loading that paint onto my brush. So I don't even have to fiddle around with the keyboard super quick. So this method of blending is what most digital painters use and have been using for many, many years. Um, and it's something that you can do in any paint program that has opacity. So for example, not MS Paint because it doesn't support opacity. Most professional digital painting programs nowadays also have some form of blending brush, uh, which is a brush that doesn't apply paint itself, it just pushes the paint around on your canvas, simulating the way you use your finger in a semi-wet paint to blend an area. Now in Corel Painter, at least version 23 that I'm using right now, uh, right up here you've got two categories of blender which you can use or you can use my uh, essential painting brush pack uh, which is free I'll put a link in the description and that has two different kind of blenders I've got this smudger I'm just gonna pick this green you can see no green is coming uh, onto the canvas from pressing but uh, as soon as I go over the red, it starts smudging that out. So if I push some of the blue this side, some of the red that side, kind of mix it in, starting to get a little bit of a purple going on there, and just smudge it around like as if I'm using my finger and you can see that uh, I'm blending these two colors together. Now, worth mentioning is this here is on a separate layer. So you see there's this gap in between the red and the blue. It's not picking up any white because it's on a separate layer. If I had to drop this down to the canvas level, now when I blend, you see it actually starts picking up white because there's white pixels instead of transparent pixels. So that's something to consider, whether you're gonna paint on a layer or uh, directly on the canvas. Obviously, if the two colors are together and there's no unwanted color in the middle, it doesn't make a difference because like here, there's no white, so it's not gonna pick up any white. We just kind of blending this purple into the red. It's really like just taking your finger and smudging. So the more you work it 
obviously the smoother that you're going to get it. Now, Corel Painter, uh, like Paintstorm Studio and I'm, I'm guessing Clip Studio Paint probably also has this, you can create a hybrid blender which is a brush that applies paint with firm pressure and blends with light pressure. I've got one of these uh, in my essential brush pack, this one here. So you can see if I press hard, I start to get green. Um, even if I press moderate, I'm still getting a little bit of green, but it is starting to blend a little. If I just tweak these settings, so resaturation is how much paint is being applied from the uh, the color wheel. If I drop that, also set that to uh, pressure. Okay, now I'm pressing softly and uh, not getting any green. But as I start to increase pressure, I start to get a little bit of green. I actually think this should have been on pressure. I might need to uh, put a little update for, for this brush pack. So if I grab this red, let's just paint it right up next to this blue. And uh, we can quite simply blend things together. And then I can press a bit harder and introduce color blend it out again so it's extremely fast to blend things this way and quite fun as well now Corel Painter also has some other brushes that could technically be used for blending as well one of them is uh, the drip brush I'm just gonna grab uh, my normal round brush and turn it into a drip brush uh, if I head on here to the general controls change the, meth the method from enhanced cover to drip now what will happen is it picks up background colors and kind of smudges everything together this, this is a, a per layer thing so if you have a whole bunch of layers it's going to be sampling from all the layers I think you might be able to turn it off yeah use improved layer support to mix in the selected color. Maybe if you turn that off, it'll only work on uh, the layer that you're busy with. But um, you can see it's it's quite aggressive, difficult to control. Fortunately, there's this little strength slider. So you can turn that down and uh, suddenly a little bit easier to to blend things. And it actually starts to feel quite nice. Turn it right down even. So let's pick a red. We can start blending this into the blue. So this is more a tool that probably a traditional painter would enjoy because it's like working with wet paint, like wet oils or acrylic and uh, kind of moving it around on the canvas. If I, uh, if I take my smudger brush and also turn that into a drip brush, see before we were actually using a paint tool, so it was applying paint and uh, blending, but now we've, we're using a pure blender brush, so this doesn't apply any paint. But we've turned it into a drip brush as well. You can also just turn down the, uh, the strength, make, make the brush a little bigger. Okay. Now you can see, just wobbling it around and it just starts to blend everything together. But it's not actually applying any paint itself. So, also lots of fun. Simple pleasures. <laughs> Another type of brush that a painter has that can blend are artist oil brushes. If we head up here to Oils Artist, uh, grab the Oily Filbert. Let me just reset it. I don't know if I've done anything to it. I'm going to grab this green. You can see it's, um, it is blending. But let's just quickly go and change the brush calibration. There we go. That's better. That's more suited to... Uh, my kind of pressure sensitivity. 
So uh, this is also, it's like moving paint around with your finger. And um, this one doesn't have a strength slider, but it has a blend uh, meter. So if I turn that right down, then I'm mostly going to be painting and not blending. If I turn this up, then I'm mostly going to be blending and not painting. So that's another option, albeit uh, a little bit more difficult to control compared to the other options I've shown. But, um, you know, people are different and uh, we like different things and we feel comfortable with different techniques. So there's something for everybody. And the last thing I want to show, it's not a brush per se, but uh, Corel Painter has this thing called a mixer and it's basically a palette. I don't use this at all myself but some of you may get some use out of it so I'm going to quickly showcase it uh, if I remember how to use it. Um, did you brush my... apply color okay so if I if I if I click apply color and I paint it'll add some stuff uh, then in theory yeah so you can mix stuff together right here. Uh, if I take that off, so it's not applying color now, in it still seems to be applying a bit of color, but maybe it's, just, oh, it's because it's a dirty brush. Here we go, dirty, let me just reset this. Uh, restore default mixer, okay, so apply paint, we've got some green, and uh, then take that off, and now we're just moving things around. It's still applying a lot of paint. This thing doesn't work as advertised. <laughs> Maybe that's why I stopped using it. Mix color. Okay. This is obviously what I'm doing wrong. It's a pebcac error. Problem exists between keyboard and chair. So I guess this is like a palette knife or something. You can pretend you've got an actual uh, palette and you mixing stuff around. So uh, once you have the color you like, you can grab your eyedropper tool and alt click. Let's just make sure this works. Alt click. Did it select it? No, it didn't. How do you? Oh, here we go. Sample color. There we go. Now it's it's added it to your, your color wheel. If I click here on the purple, there we go. So just pay attention to these uh, little icons below. So uh, yeah, you may enjoy this. Um, it's not for me. I'd rather just mix it straight on the canvas. But if you do enjoy this, I think you can probably make it bigger as well. And there are some uh, preset mixer pads. Um, this is the, the default one that I'm using here. Just to give you a, a practical example, or demo should I say. This is a fish I kind of sketched last night. Let's say we want to add some pink in here. Here we go. It's as easy as that. I'm not even using a blender brush. I am literally just uh, using a, a default kind of round brush with some transparency. If I make my brush smaller, just get a little bit more intense pink over there. Alt click and brush over that. And then I'll alt click the color that I brushed over, extend that out. And you can see how very quickly you can create a smooth gradient over here. Alt click this color brush it over, alt click that color, extend it out. Maybe I want the pink to come out a little bit more. You can see not difficult at all. So I hope that helped. I hope that answered uh, your questions about blending. I guess I'll end the video off with a quick time lapse of me painting this fish from last night. Uh, thanks for watching. Much obliged if you leave a like and subscribe. Until the next one, God bless.